Welcome. In this video, I am going to discuss what is non-stationary series. In the previous video, I have discussed what is stationary series. How do we identify tools to identify AR IMA models? All R codes are linked uh, are given in uh, in the video link. So, what is non-stationary series? Why is it important to non study non-stationary series? How do we determine whether a series is non-stationary or stationary? So these are some fundamental questions which we'll discuss in this video. <clears throat> in earlier video, so we have defined that a series which has constant mean. That is, if you take any, any range of series, whether this one, whether this one, whether this one, or this one, or this one, its mean should be constant, variance should be constant, and covariance should not be a function of time. It's only function of the distance or the lag between them. No. If series stationary, we, we say that system is in equilibrium. If series is non-stationary, it means there is uh, some uh, non-adjustment between the series going on, consumption, income, like that. We'll discuss these things when we'll discuss multivariate time series. So if variance is time dependent, our mean is time dependent, our covariance is autocorrelation is time dependent, then series is non-stationary. So in this video, if you see here, the mean of this data range is this one. So mean of this data range is that is vertical, vertical average. So what mean should I take to, uh, what mean as single value should I take to represent center of this data? Usually we have IID series. In IID series, it's not the case. You have data like this way. So mean, single mean represents basically the mean of data is this, oh sorry, uh, this, this single mean, constant mean, is a, re a representation of center of data. But in this case, you cannot have the scenario. So therefore, mean is changing over time. And when mean is changing over time, there, there cannot be a single mean which represents the center of data. So <coughs> we say if b is equal to 1, it means yt is equal to yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And we call this model as random walk model yt equal to yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. So this, this coefficient b is equal to 1. So it means it's a random walk model. And if you have this drift parameter, long run average, this is also there, then it's called random walk with drift parameter. And if you have, if you add plus beta times t in this equation, then this is random walk model with <coughs> drift and deterministic trend. Basically, this t, this t is 1, 2, so on. This is your deterministic trend. Whereas yt is function of b, yt, this is called stochastic trend. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> no, you see, this is an example of a random walk process. All these codes are given in video link. So in this case, your average here, here, here. Average is not, you are not uh, turning back to your long run equilibrium. So this may be another case. So we don't know what, what's basically its long run equilibrium. It's not turning back. This may be another case with long run average. This drift parameter is very dominant. So these are very small kinks, very small kinks going on instead of having uh, dominance of uh, stochastic term. Your deterministic trend it, uh, term is dominant here. So what what is non-stationary? Why is it important? And what are consequences are? How do we determine series is non-stationary or not? So shocks do not die out. You see, I have just written yt equal to yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. So yt minus 1, when I substitute yt minus 1, it will be yt minus 2 plus epsilon t minus 1. 
and plus this epsilon t and when i do backward substitution so on it will be y t minus 3 plus epsilon t minus 2 plus epsilon t minus 1 plus epsilon t so it means a shock here is completely carried forward after one leg is completely carried forward after one leg but if this coefficient b is 0 0.5 then what happens this will be epsilon t and it will come out to be 0 0.5 it will come out to be 0 0.5 square so this shock will die down so here what we what do we say the shocks do not die out it's, it has statistical consequences as I mentioned that there is no long run mean. So when you will apply t test for coefficient testing, so t test will be beta 1, beta hat minus beta divided by standard error. So what should be the standard error? If you don't have constant variance, you cannot have this uh, standard error. Your statistical standard statistical theory is not valid if series is non-stationary. We'll discuss it in unit root testing as well. Its distribution will be non-normal, which means your standard statistical inference that we are 95% confident that this is between 1.96 standard error of beta hat. So this, this is also not constant. Uh, this also does not hold. Your AR coefficients will be biased upward or downward. And when they will be biased upward or downward, when you will forecast for yt plus one time period, since this coefficient is biased, this coefficient is biased upward or downward, your forecast for next time period will be biased. So th th these are the consequences of non-stationary. Right. So in general, we may write equation yt equal to b y t minus one plus epsilon t and if it is uh, you no, know, if we do backward substitution, you will see that these shocks do not die out. These shocks do not die out, and this b is one, one. So it means epsilon t, epsilon t minus one. This coefficient is one, one square one, and so on. So this will keep on adding up, and series is called integrated because your epsilon one, epsilon two. Next will be epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3. So series is adding up. Those shocks are completely carried forward. So series is called integrated. Series is called non-stationary. So if B is less than 1, what will happen? This B is uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 square, 0 0.5 cube. It will die out. If B is 1, this shock will not die out. And as I mentioned, this will be like this way. Y1 will be Y0 plus epsilon t. Y2 will be Y0 plus epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. Y3 will be Y0 plus epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3. Those shocks are carried forward as it is. There is no shock absorbing capacity. And B greater than 1 is not uh, a common phenomena in social sciences. It's an explosive process. And in diffusion and uh, Fourier reactions, we may study these explosive processes. So this this is this is not uh, basically a case under uh, uh, consideration in our course. No, <clears throat> non-normal distribution. So we, uh, what are the consequences if series is non-stationary? Non-normal distribution of test statistics, which means your standard statistical inference will not be valid. Your OLS coefficients will not be bi bi uh, unbiased. You may estimate AR1, but actually it's not the case. Your, uh, since uh, forecast is dependent upon AR MA coefficients, so if those are biased, it means your forecast will be biased. And your statistical uh, standard uh, confidence intervals for coefficients are not valid because your underlying distribution is not normal statistical consequences so you will you may observe very high r square but it's a spurious relationship i'll explain what is spurious regression your statistical t statistics as standard errors are not appropriate your t statistics will not be appropriate your regression coefficients will not be there will be no long run equilibrium so if we simulate two or two series independent of each other though these codes are given in the video 
No, by construction, they are unrelated, but you will see they may have very high R square. That is, consumption of US may be highly correlated with uh, uh, the, the export of UK. So, since both have time trend common, so it means there will be very high R square. Maybe they are otherwise not, uh, they are not, not related or they are not as strongly related as it has been observed. What's the criteria that whether your model is correct or not, I have explained in previous video as well. The one and only criteria, your residuals should be IID. So when you will see that Y and Z are spurious, your residuals will not behave properly. When you will put legs of YT on uh, right hand side of the equation, you will see that uh, uh, this Z may not have no impact and residuals started behaving properly. So this will we will we'll discuss in multivariate uh, analysis. This we have already discussed. Okay, the, uh, I think. Uh, so if B is 1, if B is 1, it means there is unit root. If B is 1, it means it's pure random walk process and it is said to have a unit root. If B is less than 1, process is stationary. If B is greater than, process is explosive and I am telling you that we don't study explosive processes in social sciences, in economics, in financial economics, in financial econometrics. So, <clears throat> a little, little uh, tweaking. We have yt equal to b yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. No, our null hypothesis b is 1. Alternative b is less than 1. b is less than 1. No. What do we write? This is important to understand. Now we subtract yt minus 1 from both sides. yt minus yt minus 1 equal to b yt minus 1 minus yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. So now you see this is your difference of yt. So we write it as delta yt, first difference operator. And yt minus 1 is common. So this will be b minus 1 into yt minus 1. This b minus 1 is considered as psi or phi or rho. So, so this psi is b minus 1. No. Instead of testing b equal to 1, this is these are there are statistical reasons for this. We don't go in that detail. In, we test psi equal 0. Psi equal 0 basically means b minus 1 equal 0 or b equal 1. So it's the same thing, just little little tweaking. No. This is your Dickey Fuller test. This is your Dickey Fuller test. But the issue was that it was observed that epsilon t may not be non-autocorrelated. They, they can be autocorrelated. So to overcome this issue of autocorrelation, Dickey and Fuller have augmented this equation by uh, adding some legs of dependent variable. So uh, the, the same thing, this is same, just with drift parameter, this is the same just with trend parameter. So first one was pure random walk. This is your uh, random walk with drift. This is your random walk with drift and trend. If you add trend, then drift must be there. So rejecting your you, what you are saying that whether psi equal zero or not are less than zero. If psi is less than zero, series is stationary. If psi is equal to zero, it means b is equal to 1, it means there is unit root. So now standard t statistics, standard statistical tables will not be valid. Now you have to check it out. If it is a pure random walk model, delta yt equal to psi yt minus 1 plus epsilon t, we use ta statistics. For this, we use ta mu statistics. For this, we use TAR ta statistics. Only difference is that is you get t, t values, but tabulated values are different. We may discuss these things in unit root in detail at some other st stage. So, if your series is 
non stationary we call it its integrated series or we call integrated of order 1 if series is stationary we say it is stationary it's integrated of order 0 usually what happens if series is non stationary then taking its first difference make series stationary no this this is what is augmented equivalent test as i mentioned a while ago that we have delta yt this is basically okay forgive me for this this is your psi or gamma or rho different notations are used no this we have to test this coefficient we have to test this coefficient why we are adding and this is yt minus 1 in the subscript yt minus 1 uh, i in the subscript why we are adding this term we are adding this term or oh, this one is also not there sorry so <coughs> hmm i think little little here in subscript there is little error uh, while typing okay no what we are saying that this this term is added because we want epsilon t to be white noise epsilon t residual should be iid so residual should be iid so this is called dikif augmented dikifuller because this term is added in dikifuller test to make series Uh, to make residuals auto, uh, non auto correlated no but please keep it in mind that main task is to test whether the psi is zero or not if psi is zero or gamma is equal to zero it means series is non stationary series is integrated because b is one there is unit root if it is less than zero it may be between minus one and plus one then series is stationary so we say gamma is not equal to 0 means series is stationary if gamma is equal to 0 it means b is equal to 1 it means series is non stationary so what what of the, which of these three uh, models to be used that is art and judgment and you you may have to think about whether it's pure random walk it's random walk with drift it's random walk with drift and trend and all that how many legs should be added basically our equation is delta yt let's uh, we write it again psi yt minus 1 plus sum sum means we are adding legs beta i delta yt minus i i 0 to p we are adding legs of this so should we take one leg should we take two leg should we take three leg four leg eight leg that has to be determined you can you can use your judgment or you may use aic criteria or you may use sbc criteria there are two things one is general to specific modeling that if i have quarterly data and i have large number of observations i may include 12 legs and then i reduce downward and specific to general that i keep on adding 1 2 3 and so on legs that that's general to specific specific to general i prefer general to specific but that's not our uh, topic of discussion at the moment so augmented equal have uh, uh, so uh, it has it has some low power in certain circumstances some other uh, tests were suggested and this is how we do unit root test philips perron test K, kpss test and other tests so you can learn those tests at your own as well so this is your philips perron test that delta yt mu steric delta t psi yt minus 1 so there is a, there is slight differences so philips perron test corrects for serial correlation and heteroscedasticity in the errors the error means basically this is my mistake this is the epsilon t for consistency so this is epsilon t by modifying the test statistics so philips perron test is slightly different and you uh, you can you can use uh, depending upon which situation you are facing okay so what is your null hypothesis why it is tra trend stationary trend stationary series means you have to detrend it different stationary series stochastic trend series stationary means you have to take the first difference i i explain 
if for example we have simple linear regression alpha plus beta t plus epsilon t this series may also be non stationary but in this case we we detrend it like this way that this y hat will have alpha hat plus beta hat trend so we y t minus y t hat so we are detrending the series but if you have stochastic trend stochastic trend is this one y t equal to b y t minus 1 so this part is stochastic trend in this case if b is 1 you have to take the first difference and sometimes you may have to go with the trend as well as the difference so so it it depends any uh, these are called unit root tests uh, there is a there is a difference in um, uh, augmented dicke fuller and dicke fuller test we say series is non stationary versus series stationary whereas kpss on one on the other hand series is a stationary or uh, and alternative non stationary so you can you can work these things at your own and structural breaks in augmented dicke fuller tests are not captured properly so <clears throat> H not. Uh, this is this is uh, okay. Oh. Simulate three processes. Now we are going to simulate three processes, and we see how to conduct this. Uh, this this is basically data which I'll provide in uh, your uh, video link. simulated time series examples so you have i0 you have you 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 import it into you graph and you observe whether series is stationary or not and uh, i'll 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 basically make a, a separate video how to apply it in practice because uh, the real real practice means true understanding so at the moment i am going to Uh, 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 summarize it that first of all we have stationary series mean constant variance constant covariance not function of time non stationary series means if any of these three conditions are violated if any of these three conditions are violated so if the mean is not constant or variance is not constant or co any of these three it's not necessary r3 all three obviously then series is non stationary how to determine whether series is non stationary or non uh, are not uh, are stationary we use apply unit root testing and in unit root testing we say that so far we have uh, there are a couple of tests four three four tests we say augmented dicke fuller test and phillips perron test and kpss test we test whether series has unit root or not and for augmented dicke fuller test if we have just random walk ta if you have random walk with drift ta mu if you have random walk with trend and uh, drift parameter ta ta these are t statistics but their critical values are different and mckinnon and other people have uh, provided these uh, other researchers have provided these critical values then we'll we'll use uh, this all this for our simulated data and uh, i'll have uh, another video on how to do unit root testing uh, unit root testing in practice using r thank you for watching take care